Hi there. Welcome to the electronics lab. I'm just going to have a sip of my tea and my coffee labeled mug before getting started. In the video today, I'm going to go through mesh analysis. And this is sometimes called loop analysis or mesh current analysis or loop current analysis. And, and the basic idea with, with this is that sometimes you have a circuit that is just too complicated to solve with any of the other simplification methods that you know of. So the mesh current analysis or the loop current analysis method will work on any circuit that has resistors, voltage sources, and current sources in it. It's a very algorithmic method. It, it does require you to solve simultaneous equations at the end to determine the currents. But it's a relatively simple process to understand with maybe some uh, complex arithmetic at the end. And the basic idea is that you identify loops in the circuit and then use Kirchhoff's voltage laws and Ohm's law to create equations for each loop and then solve those equations. And once those equations are solved, you solve for the currents in each one of those loops. And then you can determine the voltages and currents for all the components in the circuit that you want. Probably the best way to learn the mesh current analysis method is to go through an example. I'll outline the steps as I'm going through it. It's not this example. I'm going to erase this. So here's the circuit that we're going to analyze with the mesh current analysis method. It's, it's a fairly simple circuit and one that we could use some other methods for. Superposition comes to mind. But we're going to use mesh analysis on this simple circuit just because we want to start somewhere and we want to see what the process is for doing the mesh current analysis. So step number one is to create, well, first identify the loops and then arbitrarily define the current to be flowing in the loop in a particular direction. Usually we would use um, clockwise. So here's one loop of the circuit and here's the other loop of the circuit. So I'm going to say that current in this loop, which I'll call I1, is going in the clockwise direction there. And current in this loop I will call I2. And again, it's going in the clockwise direction there. Step number two is for each one of the resistors in the circuit, use the loop direction and identify or determine the voltage polarity for each one of the resistors. So if I1 is going in this direction, then the polarity for the voltage across this resistor is like that. Um, for, let's, let's look at this one next. For, for, this particular circ uh, for this particular resistor, current again is going in that direction. So we'll have positive on that side, negative on that side. This resistor in the middle is a little bit different. It has I1 current going this direction and I2 current going that direction. So we're going to identify the voltage polarity for each one of those loops, for each one of those currents, and write it on the appropriate side, on the appropriate side of the resistor. So that was step two, identify and determine the polarity for the resistors. Step number three is for each one of the loops, write a KVL equation for the loop. And that's fairly simple for the sources and the resistors that are by themselves. For the resistors that have currents going both directions, we need to take into account both of those currents. So for, for this particular loop, if, we're, if we define this point as our reference, we're starting at zero, we're going to go up 12 volts. And then because current's going this way, we're going to have a voltage drop across that 4 ohm resistor. And that's going to be based on the current going through that 4 ohm resistor. So we're going to have a drop. I1 times 4 ohms. Now for the 3 ohm resistor, it's a little bit more complicated because we have an I1 current going this direction and I2 current going this direction, and we need to take into account of both. So the current I1 going that way will cause a voltage drop through, I, through that 3 ohm resistor. Whereas the current I2 going that way will be a voltage rise. And now that we've gone through the two resistors, we're back to our reference point, our starting point. So the sum of all of those voltages, according to Kirchhoff's voltage law, should equal zero volts. The second loop, this one here, well again we can start, let's start at, at this point. So here's our reference point. We're going to go in this direction. Now again, that resistor has current going both directions. So going this way will be a drop. So that's going to be 
minus I2 times 3. And the current that's going this way, it will be a rise. So that'll be I1 times 3 ohms. And then again, we'll have a drop across that 2 ohm resistor. So minus I2 times 2 ohms. And then we'll have a rise here with the 8 volt source, plus 8 volts. And we're back to the beginning, so the sum of all of these voltages should come to zero. Step number four is related to these equations, and basically what we're going to do is expand the equation and collect, and collect terms. So I've got a minus I1 times 4 minus I1 times 3. It's minus I1 times 7. And then I have a plus I2 times 3. And then I want to put the voltage source on the other side of the equation. So that's going to equal minus 12 volts. Um, I'm going to rewrite this over here in a slightly different form. I'm basically going to multiply everything by minus 1. And I can do the same thing here. Combine terms. Uh, I've got uh, an I1 times 3. I've got two I2 terms, minus 3I2, minus 2I2. And I'll move the voltage source to the other side of the equation. Now I'll, I'll, I'm going to write it back over here. And again, multiply everything by minus 1. It's not totally necessary. I'm just going to do it. Step 4 was to reduce it down to this form. Now I have two equations for what's going on in the circuit. And I also have two unknowns, I1 and I2. And I can solve this small system of, of linear equations to determine I1 and I2. Lots of different ways to do it. I could do substitution. I could use determinants. I could put it into a, a program to, to solve equations for me. In this case, I'm going to use determinants. I'm not going to go through how, how to use determinants. That's something else. That's something that you can look up. It's a fairly simple, it's a fairly simple process. Um, So that was the process of using determinants to determine I1 and I2. OK, now that we have the I1 and the I2 currents figured out, we can determine the voltages across and the currents through all the components in the circuit. Let's start with the voltage across this 4 ohm resistor. Well, the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor will be the current through it times its resistance. I1 is the current through it. It's going to be 4.38 times that 4 ohms, which works out to about 17.55 volts. Now what about the 3 ohm resistor? Well, let's start off with looking at the current through the 3 ohm resistor. Because it's made up of both the I1 and the I2 current going in opposite directions. So I3, if we define I3, to be that direction, or the I the three ohm resist or the three ohm current to be in that direction, it will be I one minus I two, which is four point three eight minus six point two three, which works out to minus one point eight five amps. Okay, so the current is actually going that direction uh, with one point eight five amps, but we've got to find it going that way so that we got the negative number, and we can also then determine what the voltage across that 3 ohm resistor is. And since we've defined the currents going this way, then let's also define the voltage as being in that orientation. So the voltage across that 3 ohm resistor will be this minus 1.85 amps times 3 ohms, which works out to minus 5.55 volts. So I could do a similar calculation for the 2 ohm resistor. I'm not going to right now. What I want to do is, is confirm that we've done all of our calculations correctly. So from Kirchhoff's voltage law, this loop, what I should have is the voltage across this resistor plus the voltage across this resistor should up, add up to 12 volts. Um, oh, I think I did a rounding. I mean, there's some rounding errors that are occurring through this, as I write on the screen, but I think that should have been 17.52 volts. 
Um, 17.55 would actually work out better with rounding, but that's all right. So the four volt, the voltage across the four ohm resistor plus the voltage across the three ohm resistor, that's 17.52 plus, minus, plus a negative 5.55 volts. That actually works out to about 12 volts, which is exactly what the voltage source is. And there was some rounding here, so that's why it didn't add up to exactly 12 volts. But that's a good confirmation that the arithmetic that I did and the, 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 the setup of the circuit that I did is correct. And when you're doing this kind of fairly in-depth analysis, it's always a good idea to do a double check on Kirchhoff's voltage law or Kirchhoff's current law to make sure that your calculations are, are correct. Because it's, it's very easy to make a mistake along the way, um, either in setting up your analysis or, or even just in doing the arithmetic. So one last sip of my tea in the coffee labeled mug. And we'll wrap up the video there. I hope that you've learned a little bit about mesh current analysis and can take this tool and, and go tackle all of those circuit analysis problems that you have. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.